Yo, what it is, this your homie, the last son himself. Thank you for pressing play. And today, I'm going to talk about post-interview woes. So when you go out for interviews, um, give me one second, please. I think it's a little bit better right there. All right, so, post-interview woes. You see a job online. You send your resume and cover letter to them. You feeling very confident because you match everything that they want. Every specification, every requirement. So, you send it in. You get the call back, come in for an interview. You show up 15 minutes early. You looking good. Tie looking good. Shirt pressed. For the lady just shirts and everything else. Looking great. Immaculate. And you go back there. Get a great interview. You know, you just knock out. Every question they throw at you. They throw a question. You just knock it out. You guys are having a good conversation. You're talking about your skills, how what you can bring to the company. And they like what they hear. They, they tell you these things. You know, your body language is matching each other. Your body language says, yo, I'm confident. I know I can do the job. Hire me. You know, you come prepared. You got copies of your resume just in case you don't have a copy for himself. You're doing everything right. So you leave the interview. Go home. Wait. Get the, get the email. You won't even read the email. You're like, ah, I know I got it. I know I got it. So, you know, so now you already planned it out. Everything out. I'm going to make this much money. I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go here. <laughs> then you read it. You know, you open it up. And it says, we regret to inform you that we decided to, to pass on you for the position. We decided to go somewhere else. Hmm. So now you hit with a lot of depression, sadness, anger, confusion, all at one time. It's like a match truck just hitting you. And you don't know what to do. So now you're thinking, something, something's wrong with me? Is something wrong with the way I do my interviews? Is something wrong with the way I dress? Is something wrong with the way I speak? Because you were not speaking the King's language. You, you were nailing it. Everything they asked you, like I said, you, you're killing it. You killed it. You killed the interview. You have a great interview. There's nothing wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. Honestly. I'm going to tell you some, some things that I've learned that what happens while someone's get passed over. Sometimes it's because of somebody knows somebody. The person got the position because they probably know the manager or somebody else. You know, which sucks because they just wasted your time. <laughs> and it feels like they just wasted my time. I can come out here, drive way the hell out here to interview with somebody that if the one was because Billy Bob know somebody who needs a job, so you're going to bring him in to help Billy Bob out because he helped you with a flat tire one day. You know, and sometimes the person ain't even well qualified. I know we be at our job sometimes. We look at people like, why do you still work here? <laughs> like, how do you get this job? You know, it, 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 it goes to our minds. And another reason why is sometimes you may be too qualified, overly qualified for the position. And they get fearful that you might try to do some kind of corporate takeover or try to take their position or you might ask for more money. Even though you're comfortable with taking the minimum money they're offering, they didn't make the decision, oh, no, he's too qualified. We're going to pass him over, you know. Or they might think you might get too bored of position. Well, sometimes you might happen, but if you need a job, you need a job. <laughs> okay, I'm bored, you might get a position. You need the money, you need the money. And that's... That's the thing. And, and sometimes age play into, into play here. Because if like you're, you're too old, you set in your ways, and, and they want somebody younger, fresh out of college or fresh out of high school who can learn more than you can. And it's true sometimes. Unless you, you, hit, you hit certain age, you, you set in your ways. So it happens. Because sometimes you bring your knowledge into the into the position. I, mean, I know we know people like that. You know, staying from, well, this is how we did our job. Well, this is how we do it here. <laughs> you know, I had people work for me before that, that, that has done that. And it's nothing wrong with you at all, man. It's something wrong with them. So, how do you get out of that post interview woes? You stay focused, you stay moving. You know what I'm saying? What I say by that is that you don't give up, man. Keep sending your resume out there. You're going to find a job that you're comfortable with. You're going to find your dream job. You're going to find a job that you deserve. You're going to find the amount of money that you deserve to make. 
and you talk to somebody. Let that frustration out. Don't just keep it inside. Go to a college and talk to the career counselor. Talk to a friend. Talk to a friend who's a manager over, over a company. So see like, what you should be doing differently. Have them look at your resume. Have them, and this is like a mock interview of you. You know, I've done it before. I had like mock interviews with my friends who are managers. Like, okay, this is what you need to do. You know, this is what you need to do on your resume. This is what you need to dress on. This is what you need to approve on. That helps out a whole lot. So do not keep that stuff inside of you. Keep on moving. Keep on pushing. Because like I said, it's nothing wrong with you at all, man. It's just, it's hard out here. You know, with so few jobs, people don't want the most experienced people. They want the fresh new people who don't know anything. So should you dumb yourself down? No. And sometimes, you might not want your dream job. Your dream job might not be a 9 to 5. Your dream job might be just work for yourself. Maybe you just want a job just to, you know, make the money to support your dream job, your dream position, the, the, the thing you want to create. I don't want to work a nine to five every day for the rest of my life. I don't. I really don't. I'd rather do doing spiritual work, doing readings and everything else, do, making videos for people all day long. This is what I enjoy. But I got to work a job because right now I'm not making only money doing this. <laughs> But do those things, man. It, it get better. It gets better. You know, keep interviewing. Keep working on yourself. Keep improving. Keep evolving your resume. Keep evolving your way of thinking. Keep evolving your interview skills. And stay focused. It's going to get hard. You're going to want to give up. You're going to want to give up. You're going to want to settle for that job you don't really want. You're like, I'll just take this little job. You might take it. Just take it temporary. Make a promise to yourself that... You will find what you deserve. You will get what you deserve. Put it out there. Laws of attraction at all times. All right? So, hold on, let me get these clothes real quick. Hold on. All right? <laughs> yes, the last time himself is bald headed. <laughs> so, I'm the last time himself. Thank you for watching. Next time.